This is another in our series of discussions on medical innovation and work and research at Hebrew University. Uh, it's being done at the Institute for Medical Research, Israel, Canada. And my guest is Alan Warburg. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Alan, uh, you head the Kuvin Center, which is part of this institute. What's the relationship between the Kuvin Center and the institute? Just one different unit? Uh, the Kuvin Center was founded many years before the, the center. Uh, they are uh, a number of scientists are affiliated uh, with the Kuvin Center, but not all the uh, scientists uh, at, at uh, Israel, uh, at Imrik, are part of the Kuvin Center. Uh, Kuvin Center uh, focuses on uh, infectious diseases, transmission of infectious diseases, while Many scientists at, at Imrik, uh, in fact, work on, on other topics. So, how did you get? It? You went to Yale as a postdoc after you finished your PhD at Hebrew U. Is that where you got into infectious diseases? No, in fact, I uh, my MA or MSc rather and PhD were already done here at the at, at the Kuvin Center. And I studied Lishmaniasis in Israel. Which oh, is as a graduate common. student. Yes, I see. And then I uh, continued that in Yale, and then several other postdoc positions in uh, in Latin America, in London, and my last one was at the NIH, the National Institutes of Health in Washington, in the U.S. Well, how did you get into this particular disease? Why that disease? Well, Lishmaniasis is very common in Israel. Uh, fortunately for us, it's the uh, rather benign form of Lishmaniasis called Gutierrez Lishmaniasis, which is common here. You better describe for our audience this disease. The disease. Because we live in Canada, it's cold, and I don't think the, it's very common in Canada. Is it? in, uh, in it's very, it's not, doesn't exist in Canada and is very, uh, but is common in, on, in South America. Gutierrez Lishmaniasis, in fact, is transmitted by sandflies, which are closer to mosquitoes than flies. They transmit a, a single-celled parasite called Leishmania, which causes a sore or an ulcer at the site where the infected fly uh, bit that person. It's quite an ugly one. Uh, it know. can be ugly. I'll uh, have to it, ask you for a slide because I want to show it. We have slides and I can okay. later on I'd be happy to show you some. Uh, the Israeli form, uh, uh, we have in fact two parasites that cause it. It can be uh, rather benign or can be worse depending on the person, the immune system, the, uh, the, the species of parasite, and the location. Of course, if it happens to be on the face of a, of a child or a pretty woman, it's a lot more serious than if it happens to be on the lower leg of a farmer. It's hard to get rid of once you get it? It can be treated. It, 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 uh, the, the cutaneous form actually is self-healing. Oh, it's self-healing. It is self-healing in, in, in almost all cases. No, it leaves no scar? It leaves and can leave an ugly scar, oh, so I it see. will be treated in the former case, when I mentioned if it's, if it's cosmetically a problem, or there are some locations on the, on the body, such as the ear or the eyelid, which, can be, which are, tend to be more chronic and don't heal. And of course, tissue damage can be very disfiguring. So it'll definitely be treated in those cases. Now, the other kind is vestigial, as you call, is that what you call it? What do you call the, the very serious kind? Visceral. Visceral. Visceral, visceral not visceral. Yes. I forgot because the wrong name. It, it visceralizes into yeah. an internal organs. Oh, I see. And this type of Lishmaniasis is caused by a different parasite, but transmitted by sandflies as well different species of sunflies. It exists in our region here in Israel, but is extremely rare. That means a case or maximum two cases a year, usually less. However, it is a very, very serious disease in parts of Indian, uh, the Indian subcontinent, including Nepal and Bangladesh, East Africa, mainly Sudan and parts of Ethiopia, and in large parts of northeastern Brazil. It exists as a very serious disease. Uh, uh, more often than not, people who, who develop the symptoms of visceral will die of the disease if they are not treated. I see. So 
So it's a you know, very high incidence, but you can treat it. Yes, it's uh, treatable. And what, how is it treated? There are a number of drugs that are treated. The most common one is, uh, is based on a, a compound of the pentavalent antimonial group, which are rather a, a rather old drug used for several decades already. But it is effective in most cases, although the, in some parts of uh, India and also uh, parts of Africa, parasites are developing resistance. Well, I was just going to ask that because that's happening with malaria and all malaria, these other things. Hap so with malaria, the it was happening a lot faster. I now see. it's also happening with leishmaniasis. There are several uh, initiatives uh, to develop and test new drugs for leishmaniasis. This is a relatively recent effort within the last decade or so. And there are a number of promising new drugs coming out uh, of these uh, initiatives uh, that, that are being used to treat visceral leishmaniasis. Is there other kinds of research to get at? Because if you say it's the sand flies, transmits it to a, a field mouse of different kinds of field mice or some kind of rodent. And that uh, rod the rodent is a carrier of it. Isn't some, there some uh, way of interfering with the chain that can cut it off? In fact, that, that my research is no, uh, deals mostly with the vector. The I vector see. is the insect, the blood-sucking phlebotomus, phlebo phle phlebotomine sandfly, which in fact is a, a transmits the disease. Our research focuses on trying to interrupt um, the contact between the fly and the humans. And so we are developing uh, several strategies for control in and around human habitation. This is in fact uh, funded by the uh, United States Army who has a, a great interest in cutaneous leishmaniasis because, because in, the, in Iraq, all the exactly. sand flies in Iraq. Uh, U.S. forces and coalition forces in Iraq and also in Afghanistan uh, are, are encountering lots of leishmaniasis. And so their program funded by the Armed Forces uh, Pest Management Board to try and, and develop methods for treating and for, in our case, controlling uh, leishmaniasis uh, but, under such circumstances. But what methods of control do you try to, uh, you're, uh, as I understand it, you're trying to cut the contact off between the sand flies and the humans, uh, but what about making the, you know, neutralizing, taking away their ability to reproduce or something like that? Do you work on that? Uh, the ability to reproduce is not, it's not feasible to interfere with. Such strategies are being conducted uh, almost exclusively for agricultural pests. In agriculture, the situation is frequently a lot simpler. This is not to say that the agricultural entomologists are not doing a good job there. Many of them are doing excellent jobs. But their job is easier, in fact, because they are dealing with monocultures of, of, uh, of certain crop or animals. And so, for instance, the screw worm which is a serious pest of cattle in southern United States and Mexico. Uh, in fact, it's also a fly. And these are being controlled by, by rearing large numbers of, of males and sterilizing them by irradiation. And when they release those, these are sterile. They mate with females that only mate once, and thereby they control it. Sand flies, we, could, we cannot yeah, adopt such a strategy. Realistic. Rearing them is difficult. They are not all monogamous. That means they must be monogamous in order for a sterile male to make an effect. But in any case, we cannot rear enough. We cannot release them. They don't fly very far. We don't know where their breeding sites are. There are many, many uh, problems uh, that, that we encounter. So basically, what we're doing are simple, simple uh, techniques. For example, if, if I look at a human habitation, be it a military camp or a, or a kibbutz in northern Israel, the sandflies invariably breed at the periphery and they fly in. We see this, for instance, we're now working in, uh, in Zdeli, our kibbutz in the Beit She'an Valley, that has just recently become a focus of leishmaniasis. So there we have tried to erect a, a barrier made of insecticide-treated mesh along the peripheral, uh, oh, the peripheral uh, uh, fence 
of the kibbutz. Sandflies normally fly low, close to the ground, because they're fragile, small insects that, uh, that uh, stay close to the ground in order not to be swept away by wind. And so they encounter this barrier, they hop on it, they, they uh, absorb a lethal dose of insecticide. And, and one of my PhD students, who's, this is his, uh, uh, part of his project, has shown that the numbers of flies arriving at houses can be very significantly reduced. Well, with that, let's take a break. I want to come back <coughs> and continue the discussion of how to stop the sand flies. <laughs>